Hi, welcome to Oma's Kitchen. So I was at the store yesterday. They had the small yellow mangoes. These are champagne mangoes or Atalfo mangoes. The small ones are the best ones to use. I take a fresh peach pie recipe from a really old cookbook that I have and I have adapted it for fresh mango instead of fresh peach. I actually grate a little bit of whole nutmeg into the mixture before I put it in the pie crust. The other thing I do for this pie, which makes it magical, is I make my own homemade crust and I add vanilla bean seeds to the crust of the pie. The added vanilla seeds in with the crust, even though it's not sweet, brings this pie to a whole new level. So I'm gonna show you my own homemade, made up recipe mango pie today in Oma's kitchen. Let's get started. All right. For the homemade crust for the mango pie, we will use two kind of rounded cups of flour. One. If you're buying one in the store for this recipe, buy a deep dish pie pan nine inches around. So I'll put that in the ingredients list. Okay, so here's my two rounded cups of flour. We want a teaspoon of salt. So let me do that. about right. A teaspoon of salt. Let me mix these two together and what we're going to do is we're going to take this salt and flour mixture. I'm going to add some vanilla bean to it and then we will use our pastry cutter to cut shortening into the very dry mixture. I'm going to use my old small beaten up cutting board and I'm going to take the seeds of one whole vanilla bean out. They've sort of, they've sealed them up together. I think because they dry out really easily. So it's kind of nice to be able to have them in plastic from the store because that means you're getting them before they dry up and turn to stone. Then you have to soak them in hot water and it becomes a real pain. Okay, a vanilla bean. And this is the seed pod of a lily plant, believe it or not. So, we have one vanilla bean. I'm going to actually cut it in half. I want to take the point of my knife. I want to hold down the end and I want to push and slide my knife down the edge of the bean, down the middle of the bean, and open it up. You see this? Mm -hmm. I can take the back of the knife and actually push it into the bean. Let me see if I can get this one to work with for the camera. I can actually push the edge of my knife into the bean and get all of the seed pods out by scraping. Do you see the little tiny itty bitty black vanilla seeds? They are, they are the treasure inside here. Okay, so we try to flatten the bean a little bit and get all of those seeds out. and then put them into the pie crust. And when we mix the Crisco, the shortening in, they mix in fairly well. They are teeny tiny little black seeds. Can you see them on my finger? Yes. So, and they smell so good. And I usually just kind of stick the bean in the flour. It sort of helps me get the last few into the flour mixture. Sometimes it's hard to get your knife in there to get it started, so you have to kind of push it in there. There we go. You see that? Mm -hmm. <clears throat> this one thing 
that I do to this pie crust makes such a difference in the flavor of the pie. The mangoes are very citrus and vanilla in the pie crust. And you know, you add a lot of sugar with the mangoes, but the vanilla in the pie crust makes this pie just, it smells so good when it comes out of the oven. The mixture of the pie crust with the mangoes is just something to behold. Okay, I'm gonna do this again. Slide my knife down the pushing so that I'm actually cutting through the vanilla bean. There you go. And then you can kind of see. I'm gonna go back over the flour, okay? Let me get my knife in there. Come on, open up for me. There we go. Come on. Sometimes it doesn't want to work. Okay. There we go. Slide it along there. Get the seeds off your knife. And then the extra seeds that are left in the pod will come out with some flour. So, so you can kind of see what I'm doing there. And last one. Work the Crisco through. Then it mixes in really well. Okay. So there's the last of it. And it's okay if you get, these are some of the strings from the inside of the pod. It doesn't matter. I mean, you could put the whole pod in there if you wanted. It's just, I don't because it's a little hard piece in the crust. But these little strings that are inside the pod, they won't hurt you at all. They're part of the flavor. So, all right, we've gotten our vanilla beans. You could see the little teeny tiny vanilla seeds mixed in with it. Yeah? Yeah. So I'm going to mix that together again and it already provides a vanilla flavor to this flour mixture which is just flour and salt and now vanilla bean. This is just Crisco. I like buying it in sticks because it's really easy to measure. And if you follow along here, you got a quarter cup, a third of a cup, half a cup, two-thirds of a cup, which is where we're going to cut it. But we want two-thirds of a cup plus two tablespoons. So right here would be two-thirds of a cup, but I want two tablespoons. So I'm going to cut it right here. So that really is only just a little tiny end, and I will use that for a, a, to butter a pan or something. But this, the rest of this actually gets cut into. I like to cut the Crisco into smaller bits before I use my pastry cutter. It just helps it to stick to it a little less. So I'm just chopping it into chunks that I can then work in with my pastry cutter. Okay. If you don't have one of these, you can do what I did for the first 10 years of my marriage and just use a fork. But this thing's handy, so we'll, we'll do this. This, is, this tool is specifically built for this purpose, to cut shortening into flour to make a pastry. What you're going to want to end up with is little chunks of flour mixed with little chunks of shortening. You know, it will look crumbly before you add your water in. And that's really all the ingredients of this pastry is flour, salt, Crisco, vanilla bean, and water. Clean it out occasionally, it helps to mix it in. Once we have this dough together, we're going to split it into two parts, put it in baggies and let it rest for a few minutes while we cut up mangoes. Okay. Really, I'm 
pushing with my hand and rubbing the pastry cutter against the edge of the bowl. It sort of pushes the Crisco mixed with flour through these holes. Clear out your pastry cutter before you put it aside. Make sure you've got all your dough pieces out. So, now I have my container of water. Let's do two. I think we're going to be in the six tablespoons range. So there's two. And we're going to start to mix it together. Until your dough starts to soak it up. I see a little black piece in there occasionally. That's all part of the vanilla. And I love that. Okay. Three. You know, the recipe calls for four to six. It depends on, honestly, the humidity of where you live. Um, the humidity on the day you're making the pie. How dry your flour is. There's a lot of things that can change how much you add. Okay, so we have three in there. Let's do two. We might be close here. This is, we have five tablespoons of cold, pure water in there. Water? Water? Yep. I should say water like I'm from Baltimore, right? <laughs> Wash your hands in the zinc <laughs> and get some water. Okay. We're close. Do you see how I'm starting to get larger clumps of dough? We're really close. Maybe one more. Let's try one more. So that's six. You see how it starts to want to roll up and come together? That means it's about ready. I think we're close here. Now, freshly washed hands into the dough. See if it'll come together for you. You don't want to add too much water because it can make your dough tough. And that's no fun. Yeah, yeah, we're good. See how it's trying to turn into one big clump here? Perfect. Don't work it too much. Okay, this is a pie crust. It's a short crust. Don't work it too much. It doesn't need that. This is actually really good. Okay. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to flatten it into a piece I can deal with. I'm going to take it out of the bowl. Get all my pieces together. Okay. Now, for my pie pan, it's deeper than most. So I want a slightly bigger piece to go across the bottom and up all the sides than the piece that I need to cover the top. Because the piece I need to cover the top doesn't have to curve down into the pan. So instead of cutting this dough in half, I'm going to make one side slightly bigger than the other. And then I'm going to put them in baggies and let them sit while we cut up mangoes. So this would be about half right here. So I'm going to do about here, right there. Okay. The dough for the bottom of the pie, the dough for the top of the pie. The top. and the bottom. And I can tell the difference just by looking at them. Okay. So, let's peel and cut up a whole bunch of mangoes for this pie. I run her along the edge. There's a, inside a mango is I, a seed that looks like a blade to me. Very flat seed. You can tell where the seed is. See? You can tell the seed lays flat. Right along this edge, it's flat through the center of the mango. I'll show you. 
you can tell mangoes are ripe when you squeeze them and your finger sinks into them a little bit. If you buy mangoes and they're not ripe, don't just leave them on your counter. Put them in a paper bag, like a lunch bag, with an apple. The apple gives off a gas that helps the mango ripen. Then leave it on your counter, sealed up in the paper bag for a couple days, and check on it, and you'll be able to tell when it's ripe by squeezing it. So I'm just taking the skin off. Look at how bright and pretty that is. So then what you want to do is slice down the side as close as you can get to the seed. You can see it a little bit in there. See it in the center? Slice down the other side. See the seed in the center? And then I usually try to get some off of the sides too. But you can tell slicing it when you run into the blade in the center. It's hard to see the seed. The pit, I guess they would call it. There. So I've used most of this mango. And a little blade goes here. And I will, as I get them cut up, and then cut them in half. So I want pieces, slices about this big for my pie. Okay. And into my bowl they go. I need is my scraper. Make my life easier. There we go. Slices. I don't know about a quarter inch to a half an inch thick. And then cut in half. And there's my pie goodies. Next.
giant bowl of mangoes. Yum. Mangoes will start to turn a little brown over time if you don't add some lemon juice. So I'm going to add lemon juice from half a lemon into a bowl just to make sure I don't have any seeds in there. There goes one. There goes two. This is why we don't... There goes three. This is why we don't <laughs> squeeze a lemon right in with the mangoes. Okay. So that is about two teaspoons of lemon juice. I'm going to put those over top. Now we want two heaping half cups. So a heaping cup of sugar. And I'm using my cane sugar that I like to bake with. Heaping means has a little rounded top on it. One half. One. Okay. What turns the interior of your pie from a soup into a pie is a heaping quarter cup of flour. So we're going to do a little bit of that. Heaping quarter cup of flour. And on top of all of that, On top of all of that, we will put some ground nutmeg. And you could buy nutmeg already ground. I think it tastes better if I grind my own. So I have a little microplane here. And I will just hold this. You can see that. Can you see that going in? Yes. And I don't measure this. It should come out to, I mean, you don't want nutmeg to take over and take away from your mangoes. You want it to add to it. So between half a teaspoon and a teaspoon, and you know, it's hard to gauge what that looks like, but you can kind of tell when you're getting close, and we're getting close. You want it to be able to be like a back flavor. Mango first when you taste it, and then a little bit of nutmeg in the background. Okay, that's probably enough. Do so you see that? That's, oh, I don't know. Between half a teaspoon and a teaspoon of nutmeg. So if you're using the already ground kind, keep in mind when they grind nutmeg and sell it already ground, they add oil to it. And it makes it a much stronger flavor. So if you're using a nutmeg that's already ground, I would back off of it and only use about a half a teaspoon. And we're gonna use a spatula and just sort of get it all mixed together. When we're done mixing this together, we're gonna roll out our pastry dough and put it in our pie. You See how the flour and sugar are all stuck in there? That's exactly what we want. As the mango cooks down, it thickens and you end up with pie filling. Okay, so let's get that out of the way. I have my pie plate here. I'm going to get a little bit of flour, throw it on my countertop. My wooden rolling pin. I used to have a non-stick one. To be honest with you, I love this one so much more. I take care of this rolling pin the way Italian housewives do. What they do is they have a wooden rolling pin, but you don't want it to get splintered and you want to make it non-stick. So after each use, I run it under warm water. I wipe it down with a paper towel. And then I take a different paper towel and I put about the size of a quarter of olive oil in the center of it. And I wipe down my entire rolling pin with that olive oil. And what it does is it keeps the wood in good shape and it makes it non-stick so you can actually use it the next time. Here's the top crust and the bottom crust. So we're going to roll out the bottom crust first, obviously. Okay, so lay it in here. Soften up the edges a little bit. I think it's going to get crumbly on me. 
And, you know, remember, we've got the vanilla bean in here, so you will see little brown spots in your dough. And that's great. That's wonderful. Okay. Let's see what we can do here. We might have to work with it a little bit to get it to not crumble too much. Okay. Oh, yeah. That'll turn nice. I will need more flour, though. This into the edge here. That's right, I'm making a mess on my clean countertop. Okay. You want to get this nice and rounded out, doesn't have to be perfectly round. Do you see all my bits of vanilla in there? I'm going to get my big spatula because it helps me deal with the dough. You want this thin, but not too thin. You want to be able to move it into your pie plate without it breaking apart. This is my pizza spatula. This helps when you're trying to get your dough to pick up. Because what you want is to be able to fold it over itself. You see that? Mm -hmm. So we want to take that and drag it here and open it up in the pan. Let me just stretch it a little bit. You want it a little stretchy but not too stretchy because if it's too stretchy it means it's going to come out tough. You don't want that. Get all the air out from behind it. Okay. Push it down into the pie pan. Make sure it's pushed into the edges. And then flatten your sides against the edges of your pie plate. Make them a little bit bigger than the edge of your pie plate. my filling. Mix it up one more time. Beautiful. Into the pie plate. Okay. And look at how it fills up that pie plate. That was about the right amount of mangoes. Look at that. Beautiful. We need flour. So this is our top crust. Work it a little bit to warm it up so it doesn't break around the edges too much. I like to make a little leaf. I poke a hole in the top of the pie and I make a little dough leaf and sprinkle it with a little bit of sugar before I stick it in the oven. Okay, nice. Let's do this and this. You don't need a lot of pressure here. The weight of the rolling pin helps. Pick it up and turn it a little. We're gonna try to round it out some. Okay, we are close here to the right size. Give it another shot. All right, I think we're good here. Let me get my pie closer. Okay, fold this over itself. Unfold it on the pie. Boom. Okay. So now we have two pieces of dough. We don't want two pieces of dough, we want one. So we take the upper one, we pull up on both, and we fold it under around the edges. 
pull up on both. See that? Mm -hmm. And then fold it over itself. This edge is what you want. And you literally want to press it into the dough. Put your finger here to keep it from squirting over the edge. And just try to, you know, kind of make it sort of even. We're going with rustic Oma pie here. So. It is sealed around the edges. We want one sharp knife to make a little hole in the center. And I usually kind of do a little point on that hole. And then let me go ahead and put these two together. Roll this little tiny bit out for my leaf for the top. You don't have to roll it much. Just make it big enough for a leaf. Okay. Cut this way. That's that one. That one. Take this butter knife and run a line down the center. I know it's a little fussy. This is just me decorating it. You don't have to do this part for your pie to taste good. Okay. There's my leaf. I like to lay it kind of in the middle. I will particularly sugar the leaf, sprinkle it around the other parts of the pie a little too. This is an old baker's trick to keep the edges of your pie from getting too brown during the time it spends in the oven. What you want to do, get a piece of aluminum foil that's a little bigger than your pan, tear it in half, right down the middle, if you can. There you go. And you want to put half of it around the edges of your pie in one direction. Leave the center open. Okay, kind of pinch it on there. And the other half in the other direction. Okay. And you leave the edges covered for the first 40 minutes, I will take the aluminum foil off. We'll leave it another 10 or 15 minutes and then out it'll come to cool off. And your pie needs to go into the oven at 425 degrees for an electric oven, about 430 degrees for a gas oven. You're gonna turn it up just a little bit for a gas oven. Here we have our mango pie. We've taken it out of the oven and we've let it sit for a good half an hour uh, or 45 minutes before we cut it. So now we're going to actually test the theory here. Oh God, you can smell it. It smells so good. Let's take a piece of this pie out. Thank you for joining me in Oma's Kitchen. If you enjoyed the video, please don't forget to like and subscribe. I'll upload more tasty videos soon. And a special shout out to Moon Pie and Lil Bit.
Until next time. Oregano.